What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Phil Shocker, the United States Hedgehog here, with our Week 9 RGBL game, not game, team builder here. First, before we get into this, if you guys are new here, leave a like, comment down below if you haven't already, subscribe if you're new, join the Phil Shocker crew today, because you'll be really with, the crew, really with the king of the crew. But, I have some very important information in that. We will not be having our Week 8 game at all, because of the fact that... Uh, Clockwork, who was the coach of the Kansas City Kings, due to a lot of IRL personal things going on for him, he is unfortunately not going to be able to commit to the last two seasons, two seasons, two weeks after week eight. So unfortunately, we will not be battling Clockwork. But that does mean we do get a forfeit win versus Clockwork, which means now we go five and three, which means I only have to win one of my two games to clinch playoffs. Otherwise, if I want to clinch playoffs with a five and five record, I gotta have a lot of people start losing. In that type of situation. So we do need to pick up a very much needed win either this week or the final week. This week's a little bit tough though because we are going against a semi-rain team in the form of the Boston Celebes and Coach Bazan. Bonsai. I'm just going to call him Bonsai. And uh, this is a very tough matchup on paper. But I think we can do it if we play our cards correctly. But let's go ahead and break down Bonsai's team here. He's got Lander Therian, Lycanroc, Kindra, Pelipper, Scizor. Top of Coco, Mill Tank, Vola B, Clefairy, and Vileplume. So very much a semi-rain team. And just I think it just screams mostly rain to me than anything else. Because he has three two mods that are here hit or miss. Two mods are a bit past that. I think the main six we're definitely going to be seeing here. Um I don't really think Vileplume comes. I will admit Vileplume does pressure Rotom because of the fact that her overheat's not much of a problem. But again, I still have other ways to handle Vileplume. That I think is going to maybe deter him from bringing Vileplume. I think Clefairy has a very, 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 very small chance to come in case he wants Stealth Rocks this matchup. Even though he can be really more of a defensive Landorus to use the Stealth Rocks abuse if he really wants to. Uh, I think Volibee does have a potential chance to show up in case it needs to stop Necrozma. We've already got a lot of coverage for that. And we kind of just handle it, so I don't really know about that. But I can see it over Clefairy for the fact that he violated purposes in our hazard control with default, even though he does have three... Four hazard controls or hazard control users in there for the top six. I do think Miltank could very well potentially show up, probably most likely as a scrappy Miltank. Because it could be big fat Miltank, but I think scrappy makes the most sense because if you really look at this man's team, he just team does not like appreciating toxic or burn. So I definitely think he wants something that can kind of just be able to counter um, the spirit to him on my team. So I'm thinking like a scrappy facade. Mill drink potentially curse and either a coverage move or something because mono normal is actually really strong against my team. I only have two resist and I want so they could be fire punch then as well. But you don't know. But the main six, I think Coco is actually a bit of a toss up this matchup. Coco is kind of forced in a lot of different situations. It kind of forced to scarf. It's kind of forced to specs. It's kind of forced to be mixed. It's kind of forced to be little things. Scizor, I think, potentially could be Bandit or the Defog user, so not what Bandit could also be Ulka Berry or Weakness Policy, potentially, in the rain. I do think we will see Damp Rock Pelipper. There's a decent chance he doesn't bring Damp Rock. There's actually very... And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't bring Damp Rock, just for the fact that, you know, Damp Rock can be nullified by the fact that I can bring Icy Rock and stuff like that. So definitely something has to be very mindful about. I think Kingdra offensively is very hard for my team. The coverage that Kindred has is going to be really strong against me. I definitely think a water type move, dragon type move. I can see flash cannon because it'd be able to hit the um, vanilla. I could see potentially a mix set. I could see maybe something like dragon pulse, liquidation, iron head, and hurricane. Hurricane is his best way to really want to hit Zapdos because outside of range, Zapdos is very, very problematic for this man's team. I think Lycanroc, because Lycanroc needs to stop the main two mods that can kind of really win against his team, being, Ro being Rotom and Vanillix. It's also a decent, good, decent revenge killer, potentially, with some speed control it has in this matchup. And I think Landers, providing his intimidate, he does have to be careful about... <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Whew. I just sneeze right there. Landorus definitely comes. I think he could potentially bring a Rocks Landorus. I can also see potentially something like Defog Landorus with Earthquake and then maybe a Rock move or maybe U-Turn, stuff like that. Does need to be careful because of the fact that it could potentially be a weakness policy in a Cosmos set in front of it. I, it could also be a very well a... Uh, he has to be careful because of a Defiant Zapdos. So 
Lando's very much... And Lando honestly could potentially get swapped out for Miltank in that type of situation then, and then Miltank would just be his rocker for some reason and stuff like that, so... Break down the team we're bringing for this week. Like I said, Rotom is pretty much free this game, but we're not bringing a Rotom that you know we love. We're bringing unique Rotom this week. We're bringing Timid Rotom with max HP, 52 defense, and 116 special attack with 88 speed. This is faster than both Pelipper and Scizor, so if I'll... Pelipper is faster than me. I'll know that with the theme showing up the Choice Scarf, which if I could see something else, I could either see Heavy Duty Boots, Choice Specs, or Choice Scarf Pelipper if he doesn't want to go the Del Damp Rock route, which very well is a possibility. Ooh. Um, we are running Thunderbolt, Hex, Willow Wisp, Nasty Plot. Nasty Plot is pretty much good because after a plus two, Thunderbolt is pretty much KO and everything. We have Willow Wisp there just to be able to nullify so much of his team. We are running the Magnet over the Charty Berry because I want to bluff that I'm Charty Berry. I also want to bluff that I'm potentially Choice Scarf. So he has to be very, very careful because if he lets something like his Lycanroc get burned, then Lycanroc is very weak against my team. I do have a good couple of checks to Lycanroc, but again... Like a rock is still very, very annoying versus my team, just from an offensive mental because of a cell rock. I could easily see a potential choice band and like rock set because of that. For the weariness and the concerns about that. I'm next bring Devin the Swamper here, holding that Rindo Berry with Ice Beam, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Liquidation. 136 HP, 32 to attack, 100 defense, 120 special attack, 120 in the speed with a relaxed nature. This speed lets me be faster than zero speed Pelipper and zero speed Scizor. So basically, with having that speed, I'm guaranteed making sure that I am faster than Pelipper, I'm faster than Scizor. So if Pelipper is indeed Choice Scarf, I will know for a fact. And also, it will tell me if it's got speed. Because more times than not, Pelippers do run speed, but there are defensive variations that could run zero speed investment to be kind of like somewhat bulky Pelippers to be able to do rock moves and go for roost. In that type of situation so be able to know if it is a speedy pelipper would be nice because then i can know it's kind of like a standard speed spread set or something like that but basically with ice beam with the investment i have unless it's not yacha berry um landerous ice beam basically guarantees oko's the landerous on the other three moves basically handle the rest of his team liquidation earthquake my main stab this game is super free against the majority of his team he does have to be very careful. I could potentially be running Scald and Swampert because of the fact that, like, if you look at Scald and you look at his team, he's got a couple things he would hate to get burned. And I'm kind of debating changing it now to Special Swampert, but Special Swampert, I think, just doesn't really do too much of what I want it to do. I think Physical Swampert puts in a little more offensive pressure that I want on it, but you never know, right? You never know. Up next, going into Vanillix. Vanillix honestly has such a free matchup against this man. He only, like, in terms realistically, has two answers to this thing. And he has to be careful switching them into this. I have Vanilla here because of the fact that Vanilla can stop the stop the rain, which is really important. I do have Aurora Veil in there. But for the off chance, I could get that Veil up. That would be huge. I do have Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon is pretty much important for a good majority of his team. Being the Lycan Rock, it's also be really good to hit the Clefairy as well. And it's also something that can hit neutrally for a couple of things on his team. Breach Dry is very, very important for the Kingdra and for the Pelipper. We have Blizzard because Blizzard's Spam can also be kind of free in this matchup with having the Snow Warning up. We are running 180 HP, 4 in spe defense, sm max special attack, and 144 speed with the Tibid nature. With this nature, we are faster than Pelipper and faster than Scizor. So if Scizor is for some reason speed invested, I am faster than that thing. Even though most times I'm not going to probably take bullet punch versus me. But other than that, this is very important for Pelipper. Pelipper is very, very key important right here. Now, more times than not, probably the main swishing he's going to have to this thing is probably going to be Scizor. But he does have to be very careful because if Scizor gets frozen, he's in a lot of problems. If that's a potential debugger he needs on his team, that's going to be something that's going to be very much not needed. Uh, up next is probably the main wing condition of the game. We have here Prisma, the Necrozma here. With Cosmic Power, Moonlight, Power Gem, and Photon Geyser. 160 HP, 100 Defense, 108 Special Defense with the Call of Nature, and 140 Speed. Basically, I did not need to run any Speed Investment to outspeed any bulk variations of Scizor and or Pelipper. But I am running kind of mixed defensive, leaning more a little towards that speed up, but pretty much exactly mixed defensive to Krozma this week with a lot of offense. Basically, if the Krozma starts setting up Cosmic Powers, and he has no way to stop that, this is basically GG because then he has nothing. Again, if Volibee becomes an issue, again, 
I can handle Volibee 1v1. I can power gen Volibee constantly because I think a physical Volibee is going to be coming more than a special Volibee, in my opinion. So there's that. But overall, I think Necrozma is legitimately the win con of this game. We need to keep Necrozma as healthy as possible. I really, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I really wanted to run weakness policy this week for Necrozma because I think weakness policy is so free against this man's team because it's going to be scaring him to run things like U-turn, knock off against my team. But I felt like just from a safety perspective and really wanting to pick up a win, I think we just could not afford to risk it. If I was in a position where I couldn't make playoffs, I honestly would have probably run weakness policy then because then it could have been able to wait for us to come back and he'll probably would have thought about that. So we are bringing Dash with that trusty choice scarf of his with Bright Bird, Cold Combat, Stompy Tantrum, U-Turn, 60 HP, Max Attack, 188 Speed. We are faster than Landers, so if Landers was for some reason choice scarf, we are faster than that. We are faster than basically everything on his team that is choice scarfed except for Tapu Koko. And for some reason, if Bill Tank scarf, but other than that, the Coco is the only thing that's really scarfed. So basically, we're faster than everything on his team except for a max speed. Well, I don't know if it's going to be max speed. I don't know if it's going to be designed to be faster than that. But basically, Pelipper, if it's choice scarf, we're faster than that. We can pretty much be able to handle that. But we are with a Brave Bird if we chip it down a bit. Stopping Chandra is there to 1v1 against Tapu Koko, potentially trying to switch into me, but we're going to U-turn first at several times just to figure out if he is going to be that. It's also free to U-turn in front of Pelipper, so if the one thing that's a disadvantage of that, though, is if he is Scarf Pelipper, he'll know we're Scarf Zapdos, and he'll know to make his specific switches. But if he's not, and he's Damp Rock, which I think he thinks I think is better to bring, it could be very eventual. But basically, Zapdos could potentially win late game if we position Zapdos correctly. On last but not least, we have Dragon Dance Norberta. We've been pretty much bringing special the majority of the season. I'm expecting him to expect me to bring special again with Fire Blast and everything like that. We are running Habanberry Flygon. Now, what does this exactly do for me? First off, with a Dragon Dance, I'm faster than everything on this team that is plus one. At plus two, I'm pretty sure that if he is running just enough speed to outspeed plus one, plus one on my Flygon and the Scarf on my... Uh, Flygon, I should be faster than Kindra, basically, then. The Habanberry is also there in case I don't want to take the risk of being faster than Kindra and just want to knock that thing out. Basically, with the Dragon Dance, I basically guarantee pretty much a KO or something like that. Basically, Thunder Punch KOs any form of Pelipper unless it's Wakanberry. Earthquake is essentially free for this man's team. Thunder Punch is basically... Uh, Earthquake, I mean, Dragon Claw is there to... 1v1 certain mons on his team. I wanted to run Outrage this week, but I felt like Outrage was a little not too necessary needed for this game. But overall, I just think that Flygon can actually put in some good work. So this is a bit of a rough matchup. We can win this game, but we're going to have to really play our cards right if we want to. But that's going to be it for me, guys. If you like him already, remember, if we lose this week, it's not the end of the world. We'll still have week 10, the final week, to win the game as well. But we don't know yet exactly the matchup was. But till next time, guys, I'm Phil Shocker, the nice to catch all. Let's hope that we can get that W. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.